Python's virtual environments help isolate our project from other projects. There's different versions all the time. Those versions change. We wanna make sure that if I'm creating a project that has dependencies with versions that change, we don't wanna interrupt any other projects. So virtual environments are really, really good for that. Um, so let's go ahead and create our first one now. The next video, we actually go into a lot more depth on each one of these. I'm only gonna be using pip emv for this one. So let's go ahead and open up PowerShell. I'm gonna navigate into my desktop with CD desktop. And then I'm gonna make a directory or a folder in here. I'm gonna say make dir, and I'll just call it CFE proj. And then I'll CD into CFE proj. So my CFE project, right? And I wanna use Python's pip module. So Python dash M pip, and then we would run install something. Right, so there's two ways to do that and that's writing it this way or just simply pip install. Now pip install assumes that you already have a version of Python on there um, and it's gonna go off of whatever that version of Python is. In this case, I'm just using Python 3 or the default system Python version. Uh, but if you had multiple versions of Python, this would be another way to use different versions of pip but you really don't need to. I'm just telling you because it's important to know about. So I'll go ahead and do pip install and we want to use pip emv. So again, pip emv is a Python package manager for virtual environments. So it manages our virtual environment. So now that I'm inside of my CFE proj, I can open it up with ii period and there it is. All I need to do here, I'll just clear everything out real quick. All I need to do is run pip emv install, it's a lot like pip, but now it's just pip emv because it's a pip virtual environment or a Python virtual environment. We'll go ahead and install, let's say requests, Python requests. It's, it's not Django, but it is a cool library that, I mean, a ton of projects absolutely use. So as you notice, it's saying that it's creating a virtual environment for this project in this location. Uh, it's using this version of Python to create that virtual environment and then it's creating something called a pip file. And then finally it's adding or installing the requests project. And once it finishes doing that, it creates something called pip file.lock. And that actually just designates a, a bunch of things about the actual environment itself. So if I look back into this CFE proj folder, I see that there's a pip file here. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up just to look at it. So if I go to open with and I look for a, a code editor of some kind, um, you may or may not have one yet, but I'm gonna just open it up just to see what it looks like. This is it right here. So it's showing me a couple things that are really important. One being the Python version, two being the packages that are installed. Of course, you can have development packages and all that, but this is allowing me to see that Python request is installed here. And this doesn't matter what version it is basically. That's, that's what's happening. It's like, hey, whatever version you want. Uh, soon what we'll be doing is saying Django, and then we'll see a Django version, like something equal to 3.0.0 or something along those lines, uh, which we'll see very soon. Now, pip emv is the only one of these three that does this by default. It creates that pip file for you by default, which helps manage the entire environment for a virtual environment and you can share this with anybody. Um, but it does take a moment sometimes to actually finish installing. Now that it is installed, I can do pip emv and shell as it's telling me right here. This actually activates the virtual environment um, so I can run different virtual environment commands. Um, in my case, I can actually say something like pip freeze. That shows me everything that's installed with this environment or with Python in general. So python-m pip freeze. That's one way to see that I'm in the virtual environment. Another way is to go into Python itself, import sys and print out sys.executable and see that, you know, this is a completely different virtual uh, or completely different path to Python than our systems path, as well as us showing us the, you know, the different uh, packages that are actually installed. Whereas my system, on the other hand, if I open up a new window here, I can do pip freeze. Let's just bring this down a little bit, pip freeze. And this doesn't have requests in there, right? So Python request is here, 
but it is not over here. And that's the difference between these isolated environments. It's, it's a big difference and it's, it's very, very useful. Um, so that's creating, installing, and uh, activating our virtual environment. Uh, just a quick recap, if for some reason you close this and you forgot, let's close out PowerShell. I open it up, here's a fresh one. Now what we need to do is just navigate to where our project is. So CD into our desktop, list everything out. I see CFE Proj there. So we'd CD CFE Proj and then pip EMV shell, right? So I listed it out and I've got my pip file in there. If you ever see a pip file inside of a folder, you can run pip EMV shell. You might have to run pip EMV install to actually install everything there but pip EMV shell will activate the virtual environment and give you access to um, the various things that are related to that project.